in today's video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of filming my vlogs and show you how I kind of put them together and the bits and bobs that I do that make a video that you see on the channel. So I'm filming a vlog about the SyncWire USB hub, which will turn my phone into a computer. It's out already, so you should have seen it, but if you haven't, there's a link up there. So yeah, I thought what I'd do is while I make that, I'd go behind the scenes a little bit with you and show you how I film them and uh, also take you to the table and show you how I set up shots there and how I work everything and just how it all goes. So what, what do we have here? So this is the camera that is filming me at the moment. It is literally filming me at the moment. And that is the one that I talk to as I stand in front of my desk. That is the Canon EOS M6 Mark II camera. It has got the Rode Wireless Go microphone on it. And uh, I'm wearing the lav mic there. And I've got the mic pack in my back pocket. Um, so that is where the audio comes from. Now, while I'm, I'm gonna be showing some screen filming in this video, and so I can sync up the screen filming with the with this audio and sort of be talking at the same time that I'm doing stuff, is I'll use this Rode NT1A microphone to record me onto the computer. And when I put it all together, I can sync the sound feed from this up and the sound feed from that up. And then they'll, the video will all be linked up and perfectly in sync. Now, so you can see me a bit better, I've got the Elgato ring light. Uh, I did a video on that. I'll stick the link up there for that. And that illuminates my face. And then behind me over there, we've, we've got the Elgato key light, which is sort of up in the air and illuminating the whole scene. And uh, I've also got the Elgato strip light behind there and some hue lights as well, just for ambiance. Um, but you can't see those at the moment because I'm looking at them. Um, what else do we got? So yeah, we've got the Rode NT1A. Um, microphone there and also we've got the stream deck uh, the large one here which has got some controls on me so I can make it brighter in here or I can you know make it not as bright um, and yeah depending on the time of day I film and everything like that I do have to tweak the lighting so yeah I think that is it from what we're going to do in here um, so yeah what we'll do now is we'll take these cameras into the living room and set them up and I'll show you how I film at the table and do all the overhead shots and filming stuff in there. So uh, yeah, let's go in there now. A few moments later. So before we can film at the table, we need some gear and uh, this is pretty much everything I use to film and I'll take you through it piece by piece. Uh, there's no wires here simply because I just couldn't be asked to lay them out in a tidy fashion. So, uh, the main camera I use for the overhead shots is this. This is the Sony ZV-1, and uh, it's really good for filming overhead. It's got a super fast autofocus, so uh, it pings things into nice clear view straight away. And then over here we've got the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, and that is what I use to film my face. Uh, it's got a really good face tracking autofocus, so it's handy for that. And uh, next to it is the Feel World 5 inch monitor that I've got. And I use this in conjunction with the Sony so I can see how everything is focusing up and just check the shots as I'm going. I use the focus assist on it, which I will show you in action in a little while. So then to record the audio, I've got the Rode Wireless Go microphone packs and a uh, the lavalier mic all in there. And to mount the cameras, I use these. So they are, these are the Elgato multi-mounts. This one here has got the flex arm kit, which enables me to bend it down and film the overhead shots. And this is just the standard Elgato multi-mount with the um, quick release head that I've added to it just to get the camera in and out nice and quickly. And we've got over here, the Elgato extension arm, which I use to mount the monitor on. And then here we've got the Elgato key light airs. Um, that is what I use to light the scene. So I usually have one of these lights pointing down on whatever I'm filming in the uh, overhead shot. And then this one is just pointing at my face to illuminate me. And uh, that's the base for it. And these are the arms. So I think um, 
that is all the gear and uh, now we need to get it all in place wired in and set up so I'm going to do that a few inches later so now it's all set up and it's a sort of slightly more traditional looking shot um, but now what I'll do is I'll show you how it all looks from my point of view and uh, because I'm using like my good cameras for the setup I've got I'm using the GoPro to uh, show you what's going on so uh, let's have a look and uh, you can see what I see. So right up there we've got the Elgato key light air which is illuminating whatever's on the table and then uh, this is the Canon ZV-1 which is filming what's on the table and then we've got the uh, feel well monitor there showing me what's going on so it just makes it easier to see that straight in my eye line um, when I'm filming rather than looking up at the viewfinder up there. There we've got the Canon EOS M6 Mark II there. Now you'll notice that both that and uh, this camera are in small rig cases. Now I use those because they add additional mounting points around the camera so it gives me additional cold shoe mounts where I can, mi where I can uh, mount the microphone packs and they also have tripod mountings in additional places which is super handy, um, especially when you've got a setup like this. So I definitely recommend the uh, small rig camera cages. They are really good. Right, so uh, yep, yeah, and uh, so that is that setup there. That is the camera filming me. And then we've just got another Elgato key light air, which is illuminating my big fat sweaty face. It's a very hot day today. And uh, that is something else that I haven't, I sometimes have to do. Sometimes I will film sequences in the other room on one day, and then maybe like a week or so later, I film the extra bits in here. I, I don't always shoot in a linear fashion. So uh, yeah, this is uh, the overhead camera. I've just got it on my uh, phone at the moment. Um, and because the Elgato key lights are so handy, we can just uh, turn the brightness down directly from the phone. So usually just out of shot, I've got my phone with me and uh, I can adjust everything. And uh, yeah, I use the focus assist on the monitor quite a bit. So uh, let's just switch that on and try and give you an example of what that looks like. But it basically puts red around stuff that is in focus. So, um, okay, too many things. there we go. So now my watch is in focus and now the, phone has got red around it because that's in focus. So using the focus as assist is a really quick way. So sometimes I have to pause while the camera moves into focus, but it's usually quite quick. There you go. Now a lot of cameras do have um, focus assist built into their viewfinder, especially more expensive ones, but using the one on the field world monitor is super handy because it's just on there and you can just switch it on and off as needed rather than having to reach around all the camera settings because once the cameras are here and set up it is a bit of a pain to access the menus and make any changes to the settings so uh yeah that is that is essentially my whole table setup when i film things in here so uh next stage will be editing so we'll have to go back in there and do some editing a few moments later uh, this is just Kip from the future asking you to give this video a thumbs up. Go on, you know you want to. So once I've recorded all that footage, um, I've got to bring it all together and edit it. Now I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit. It's, it's personal choice really. There's Final Cut Pro, there's iMovie if you're into Apple, and there's loads of free bits of software around. Premiere Pro is amazing, but I've been using it for years, and I'd say I'm probably using only about like 2% of its full capability. Uh, so first off, what I actually have is sort of like a template. You'll notice that most of my vlogs have a similar style. They've got the counting leader at the start, then there's me, introducing the video, saying roll titles, then the title's rolling, and then we go into the actual video. So I've got a template laid out ready for that, just for me to sort of basically keep everything as uniform as possible. So I'll show you that now. So uh, we just scrub along the timeline. So there we go, there is our counting leader. And then um, we move along. You can see the animation comes up 
uh, with the subscribe the channel and then uh, I've said roll titles and then the titles roll and then we've got the title card so I obviously have to change those for each vlog there have been a few occasions where I've forgotten to do that and it's very embarrassing and it makes me very annoyed but never mind and then uh, we scrub further in and then we've got my little uh, name card that comes up and then we use this uh, sort of product card I guess um, that usually sort of shows the name of the product I'm talking about and the price um, but I do use this for sort of other information that pops up in the video and then we scroll all the way to the end and then we've got uh, the pop-up coming up again I just sort of drop that into the video somewhere and then we've got that like and subscribe that comes up there and then we just go straight into the uh, end credits so yeah that is pretty much all of the vlogs that I've been doing recently follow that same idea I'm gonna I might switch it up and change it in the future I don't know yet but yeah that is it and so I've got a template ready to go so it makes my editing a lot easier and hopefully it makes everything a little bit more uniform okay so I'm just going to show you this roughly I'm not going to show you like the whole editing process so where I'm editing the sync wire vlog that I mentioned earlier um, so we've got footage from three sources so we've got the footage that I shot on the camera up there we've got the additional scenes that I shot on this camera here and also we've got the screen recording of the sync wire so we've got three different sources so um, let's have a look at this one this will be the main camera up there so there we go and that is me recording the intro this is very meter this is me recording the intro to the video you're watching now i did them both at the same time and that's that's something i do quite a lot of you know sometimes i bulk record intros um and like i change i change my clothes as well so it looks a bit different um so yeah this is like the standard video and i'm just scrubbing through now something that i've noticed already is you can see the audio levels there and they're peaking just on just well yeah they're sort of nearly peaking out so what we need to do is drop the audio level a bit by about 0.4 there we go see i tend to not like the audio going above minus 12. i do try and keep the sound throughout the videos uniform because like sometimes if I'm watching YouTube videos late at night you find that some people record their audio really high and others record them really low and others vary in between the video so I do try and keep it a uniform sort of minus 12 is that better yeah that bars peaking at minus 12 ish that's fine so because I use the uh, microphone to record the audio track from that that is like my main audio track so here we've got the video track on the top and then underneath here we have got the audio track and we can uh, have a little closer look and you can actually see like the peaks and troughs so where <laughs> where it's there's nothing it's actually silence so that is quite handy for my editing I know that usually within those silent bits that's where I'm thinking about what I'm going to say next or I've forgotten what I'm going to say or I'm just doing something so usually with the editing process you can actually chop stuff down even just by looking at the sound waves because you know those bits are silent and probably not very interesting to the viewer so um in this video we used the screen recording from the computer so now the problem we have is we've got two clips both with their own soundtrack they're not in sync they're just kind of floating around now you could probably look at the sound waves in closer detail and um, sort of try and drag it into position but thankfully we're lucky in that um, Premiere Pro allows us to synchronize so hopefully if I click on this OK thing it will scan through both tracks and it will line them up so they're in sync and there we go so um, 
So this is the point in the video where I turn on the screen recording and start talking about it. So what we can do is just to make things less confusing, we can uh, bang off the, uh, can turn down the other audio. Actually, let's just get rid of it completely. So let's unlink it and there we go. So we're just left with the video. Because the screen recording is on video channel two, that means it's shown first. So the higher the video channel number means that's on top. So video two is on top. But sometimes when we're editing, we don't necessarily want stuff on top. So what I can do is I can just use the scaling and the positions tool just to add like a little window. As I work, it's showing in the window. Um, but like this bit here, like where I'm not there, is, is kind of dead. So we just need to remove that. So, yeah, that's sort of like a quick overview of like the editing process. Basically, I've got to go through everything I've recorded now and cut out the bits that I don't want you to see, bits where I mess up, where I fall over my words or where I don't say the right thing and, you know, or I listen to it again and think nah, that wasn't very good. So, yeah, it's just a, a case of sitting through what I've just done and reliving it all and trimming the fat and also because I shoot some bits out of sequence like I think oh god you didn't mention how much it is then there will be like I'd when I've thought of that later on I'll record a bit saying how much it is and then just drop it in and hopefully it's relatively seamless um, but you know I don't script these videos I don't really even prepare for them I've got an idea in my head about what I'm going to do but I find my best stuff if you can say that, is when I just kind of do it off the cuff. And uh, sometimes it works and I get everything out. And then other times I'll just wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, you should have said that. Or I'll get a deluge of comments of people going, why didn't you say it doesn't have Bluetooth? Or something like that. Anyway, so I'm going to get on with editing it now and maybe we'll come back when it's all edited. And I'll show you what an edited video looks like on the screen. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Two hours later if you're watching this and enjoying it don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell to get notifications when any new videos go live well it's been about an hour and a half two hours since i uh, filmed that last section and the vlog is now edited and um, i'm pretty pleased with it. It's turned out okay i think the vlog took about half an hour to film originally and as i say it's taken about an hour and a half to two hours to edit which is all right in the grand scheme of things so I'll quickly show you kind of how it's looking now. We've got it all edited down nicely. Jump into the titles. And then you can see like basically sort of every little segment here is an edit point. So where it jumps between the two things like that, that's where I've made an edit. Uh, I think I had a little, little bit of trouble with this bit where I was, the camera was keen to focus on my face behind the product and I wanted it to focus on the product. So yeah, there was a, I had to do a bit of editing to sort of uh, edit out the camera hunting for that, but that was all right. Um, so here, this is where, this is the bit where I pretend, well not pretend, this is the bit where I show me plugging in but I don't do it at the time. So um, we've got me talking and then cuts to me plugging in the HDMI cable, back to me and then back to the, the, the keyboard cable. And you can see the bit that's about to play. So that's that bit. And that's just sort of produces like a seamless sort of edit, I think. Um, and I think it's good to show like what you're actually doing. So people who've got the device who don't necessarily know where their HDMI from their bum, they plug it in the right place. <laughs> and yeah, so um, this is the bit now where I'm showing the, uh, the screen as we're working. And uh, what I've had to do here is I wanted to jump between like showing me in the window on the screen and then like full screen me. So basically you can see up here at the moment, the scale of me in this window here is 31%. And then when it flips to this bit here where it's full screen, it goes to 100%. And like I said earlier, um, like the highest, the higher the number, the more on top it is. So I'm always on video number two 
and then the screen background is on video number one so the screen is always there but I'm just on top of it because I'm bigger. Um, in this video I show um, my WhatsApp and I don't I don't necessarily want to show like all the people's details or what they've said to me so I've just um, I've just covered them up so I had to basically add a blur layer so um, there's that so I've added like a, a blur on the screen there but you know sometimes blurring quite handy for like if you're putting in passwords or stuff like that and you don't want the people of YouTube to see even though I'm sure you're fine upstanding citizens most of you so yeah that is that is the video we just sort of scroll to the end and then uh, the old like and subscribe so that you can see my like and subscribe animation pops in there and that's on video layer two so it pops over and then here we've got the um, dip to white so as I say see ya it fades to white and then the music fades up so that is the vlog editing in a nutshell so that sort of 30 minutes or so of footage has become about 12 minutes which is all right I, I try and keep vlogs around about the 10 minute marker days out tend to be a bit longer because there's just so much content but yeah sort of 10 10 to 12 minutes is the golden spot hmm. so yeah that is editing in a nutshell so there we go that's a sort of fairly decent sized vlog there explaining how i put everything together and hopefully i've covered all bases but if i haven't then please do drop a comment below and i'll happily answer so uh, yeah if you do enjoy the videos then please do give them a thumbs up if you don't give them a thumbs down it's probably both the same in youtube's eyes anyway it's all interaction so uh, thank you for that and uh, if you really enjoy my videos then please do consider joining the channel if you join from the 4.99 and above tier then you get to see these videos before anyone else you lucky people that's about it from me thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe so you know how that all works now you've seen it in this video and i'll see you soon for some more vlogging fun see ya